Right, I'd like to touch on something that may be considered a little controversial. Now, there's two uh, main thoughts about brass playing. That's the lips have to vibrate together, buzz together, and that you blow harder to play higher. Okay, so firstly, um, there's a book by Arnold Jacobs, there's several books by Arnold Jacobs, but in one of them he says something along the lines of the psychology of lips vibrating freely on a stream of air, which is a sensation that I really like. Now, he doesn't commit to saying the lips must close or they mustn't close, and that really doesn't matter. The sensation or the psychology is that the lips vibrate freely on a stream of air. Now, I really like that idea. But then there's terms open aperture or closed aperture. And so I thought I need to find out if I'm gonna do videos and try and help people out and try and help myself learn and all that sort of thing, I need to be kind of sure that what I'm saying is valid, it is correct. So I uh, approached uh, people that are a lot smarter than I am and know a lot more about this stuff than what I do about the physics of what happens in the mouthpiece with the lips and the pipe and all that sort of thing. And what I was very, very excited to learn was that the lips actually do not have to touch every vibration. In other words, A440 means the lips have to open and close 440 times a second. Now I've seen videos that show the lips vibrating and to me they weren't conclusive. So finding out from um, people that run acoustics departments at universities, like the University of New South Wales has a fantastic acoustics department, and to find out that they set up a mechanical system for trombone and didgeridoo with fake lips and they started a sound wave, they excited a sound wave, they got the lips into oscillation without closing uh, entirely each time, um, was, was uh, sort of astounding to me. It was very exciting because I wanted to back up what I'm saying. Now, there was a degree of confusion when I used the term open aperture. These people that do physics and think about things like this go open aperture. An aperture is an opening. You can't have a closed opening, and an opening is an opening. So I now use the term closed lips and open lips as opposed to aperture open, aperture closed. Um, but the, the, the fact of the matter is that we could get our 440 pulses per second, but the lips don't have to close. So that further illustrates this whole idea of one column of air into the body, through the lips and they they're vibrating loosely through the instrument into the room it's one solid um, air column now as far as pitch change goes there's a lot of talk about pushing harder from the body now as you'll discover as you go through the exercises that's not where pitch change comes from that's where volume comes from when you go from low range to high range from a loud low note to a loud high note, you will feel the body do more work because the upper frequency has more resistance. We'll talk about resistance as we go along. Uh, and there's a smaller aperture, but the actual pitch doesn't come from that. So we do some exercises starting loud down low and getting soft up high to differentiate between where pitch change comes from and where volume comes from in the sound. So I've got my little amazing ukulele friend here just to demonstrate the idea now I'm not going to put any more tension on the string than what is already in here so I'm just going to okay so that's whatever note it is and now I'm going to pluck it lightly now I'm going to hit it hard all right there's your volume so I can't change pitch from hitting it harder the same as if I've got a setting here I can't change it by pushing the air. Now in the low register, yes, you can exert more force and you'll kick from a low C to a G. But when you start getting into the higher register, you rely on this without understanding what this is doing and you're gonna just be forcing air into a pocket, like a, a frequency that's not matching the instrument 
So it doesn't add up and you get all that back pressure back in the body. Where if this knows the position of each node, then the air flows freely. So it, if I increase the tension, it doesn't matter even if I pluck it very lightly. The pitch still changes because of the tension aspect. So if we think of our sound equals flow plus tension um, equation, the sound equals the flow, so the flow from the body, there's your volume, and the tension from the, especially the aperture corners, because that's where the lips meet the instrument. So the tension there, balanced with the correct flow, will create any note on the instrument at any volume, depending on the way that you set it up. But just don't be misled to thinking that range comes from the abdominal muscles and push there. That's not where range comes from. Okay, cool.